All right. Good morning, everyone, or afternoon. Welcome to Meet the Masters. Today, I'm joined by Master Jerry Stein. Good morning, sir. How are you? Doing well. Thank you very much. Thanks for thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. Um, for those of you don't that don't know, you're in, you're in California, correct? Yes. Awesome. How are uh, how are things in California right now? Well, we're in a drought situation again, uh, which increases the fire danger. So we have our share of hazards. Hazards. Uh, we're relatively close where I live to the ocean, about 20 miles. So it usually cools down in the evening and we don't get as much heat as inside inland gets. Gotcha. And it's pretty mild. Yeah, we were talking earlier and uh... You know, I found out that you don't have an air conditioner. I was a little jealous of that because <laughs> it's it's hot and humid here today. Uh, how are things? I, I I know earlier this year I I saw you on the virtual masters clinic uh, training with some of your your longtime training partners. How's how's the martial arts part going? Have you have you been able to teach it all or train it all? Well, most of my recent teaching has been. Uh... Zoom, uh, the uh, Park Point Tom Sudo, they've been work, working out in a park and they're still outside because we're still trying to get back into our facility. And it looks like we might get back. We've gone to a uh, more open, what do they call it, state as far as the COVID. Right. And then I was often like Master Ramirez will come down from Bend and the old time friends, Jim will come over, Master Duffield, my longest friend and work out here. We've got a carport, got grass and it's usually pretty mild. So it's, that makes it nice. Awesome. Now Park Point Tung Sudo, that's uh, is Master Logan. Actually it's uh, Mr. Taylor, uh, Eric Ty Tyler is, is taking over. He's, Master Logan is still teaching. Mm -hmm. and uh and helping them out and hopefully like i said they'll get back into uh indoors before winter comes <laughs> right <laughs> i got the chance when i tested for my red stripe uh i got the chance to be master logan's partner at my test and he was an excellent partner and, and a great martial artist <laughs> yes he's a great man too he's he got some really good friends yeah, and I, uh, you know that's one of the reasons why I, I want to talk. Uh, a couple of people are saying hello. Uh, Master Joe McCarty from Alabama says good morning, sir. Morning. Uh, speaking of great friends, uh, <laughs> and uh, Lindsay from uh, the UK, she says afternoon from a sunny seventy-eight degrees UK. And what time's uh, it in the UK now? UK, it would probably. I think they're five or six hours from me. Oh man, Lindsay, you'll have to let me know. I don't remember offhand. I would guess <laughs> at five o'clock. <laughs> um, and Joe Vell from Costa Rica says Tong Su. Oh, Tong Su. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, it's you know we we're talking about the interviews, and it's it's cool to be able to uh, to share uh, from you know all around the world. Uh, UK is four p.m. So yeah, it's four p.m. that time. <laughs> at least it's not midnight. <laughs> it is not midnight. And then uh, Master Patrick Marsh says, good morning, sir. So good morning. Got some friends watching. So if, if you could share with us some, some early memories, how did you get your start? Or why did you get your start in the martial arts in the first place? Well, I was uh, going to junior college in wrestling. And one day, one of my wrestling buddies who had a, uh, an apartment, he was from uh, out of town, said, you've got to come see this. So I went to this uh, a gymnasium with Master Scalercio and, and I was amazed. So I'd sit there and watch and I'd come back, I'd watch. And so I actually came down to my good friend at the time was trying to talk me into doing scuba diving. And so it came down between scuba diving and martial arts and I chose the martial arts. And I, I just, uh, our old instructor had uh, been in Korea for like seven years and he married a Korean and, and he'd sponsor civil over. And so it was a, one, a, a Mr. Lee. And so after watching one day, he asked me if, if I would hold a, like a cardboard, representing a board. So I'm standing in a chair and I'm like this, and this guy jumps around and he's hitting it. I was like, 
really impressed. And then, then it hit my hand and he was so sorry. I said, no, 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 that's good. Do it, do it again. <laughs> but uh, so that was in 1966. But then, uh, so I trained for, oh, accolades to my, my initial instructor was, I watched and I, you know, I'm a student, I haven't got any money. And I said, well, I can't afford it. And he goes, don't worry about it. Come on and work out. And so after about three weeks of that, I sitting watching and gave me a uniform and I started. And then uh, we had the, the Vietnam War. So I went into service in 1967. And my first base was in Thailand and all the bases in Thailand had Korean instructors. Mm -hmm. So I started, uh, that scholarship was uh, Muda Kwantong Tado Subak Do. Mm -hmm. And so over there is, is Jida Kwan, which all the Korean arts are pretty similar. And I got my black belt in 1969. And then when I'd come home on leave, I'd learn more from National Scholar Shield than I did anywhere else. So that, and in 1972, he took me to Korea with him and I tested for my Edon. And that was, that was a exciting experience. It was, we went to work out in the morning and they, the guy said, you're testing. Because I had enough time, I said, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> so I tested, and and uh, according to Mr. Scarcio, he said I did real well. <laughs> they they liked me. <laughs> well, what was testing like there? Uh, was it a, was it a long test or? It was all physical. We warmed up. I did all my forms. We did some one steps and then free sparring and and. And that was exciting. So, especially at the first time we're having an exchange, you know, he's kicking and I'm backing up like, wow. So I decided I better get close to him. <laughs> so I started uh, sparring in close so I wouldn't be kicked. <laughs> and then we had a good time, went out, and had some uh, dinner that, after that. How long were you able to, to be in Korea at that time? We just went for two weeks. Okay. I think it was a, the trip over and back. So we, we went and we saw the uh, Olympic boxing team they had and it quite a primitive uh, setup at the time. And we saw their, uh, their athletes and we worked out and we went, went sightseeing. So it wasn't all just working out. We got a chance to, I got a chance to see some of the culture and, and uh, made a couple of good friends. That's great. You mentioned that you were wrestling. Do you feel like your your wrestling training and kind of the mindset that as that wrestlers have helped helped you in your martial arts uh, endeavors? I believe so. Uh, uh, all the arts are pretty much interrelated, and there's uh, uh, like many of the techniques and some of the forms are actually positions where you'd be set up for a throw, a sweep, or a takedown of sorts. And actually, Grandmaster Shim, I forget what year it was, uh, commissioned me to make 30 add-ons to the, uh, the one-step, hand one-steps. And so what I did is I added a finishing technique. It may have been a sweep, a trip, a throw. All of, because of uh, working on a hard service, to try to stay with minor throws. So you're not going up and over and down. Yeah, I, uh, I, I've done Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for many years, and, you know, I, too, see the, the applications of, of, you know, clinching, getting in close, and, and taking someone down or throwing them, so I, I appreciate that, that you, you shared those. Um, are, are those around anywhere, as far as the... I think, I think Master Debaca put it on a, a CD. Okay. DVD. And he's told me all the ones he put on there, but I haven't looked them up because I have a DVD at home. Gotcha. Yeah, I, th I think when I talked to him, he mentioned the DVD that had, uh, you know, some information on that. I, I, I should probably reach out to him and see if I can get that because I'd, I'd be interested in, uh, in seeing those. Yeah, and another thing that uh, Grandma Shin had us do, we had 20 advanced one steps. So... We did those and traded back and forth. And we presented, presented those at the mattress clinic 
as um, not requirements, but this is something you can do. Yeah, absolutely. Again, we can always, and Grandmaster Shin was always big on practice basics all the time. But, uh, you know, when you, you train, you always have that desire to like, well, what if I do this? Or what if you add this on? So it's, it's nice to have someone research it and actually have, well, this is what you can do after that. So I, I, I like that information. Um, one of the other things that, that I know you did for the association, or we're obviously, we're going to jump ahead a little bit, but you researched for the master's book. Um, I don't know how it's said in uh, Korea, Korean, Un Unsu, or the, what's the, uh, the this one here. What's oh, the name? Unsu. Unsu, yes. <laughs> Could you talk about that was funny. I got a, a letter call from Grandma Shen and it, as we were dividing up the advanced forms for the different masters to put them together. And he asked me about doing Unsu. I thought it was uh, one shoe. And so I was working on that. And then I got a call from Master Green and Master Khan was doing Unsu. And, and uh, actually, I didn't know the form at the time. Uh, so I had to learn it so I could present it. It's a, it's a great form. Uh, as a, a lot of variety in it. And so I researched it, uh, had uh, Master Quinton who used to be with us. He was a form, Kim form uh, director for chair for quite a few years. And he had done it. And so Grimshin sent me the video of him doing it. So I watched that and spent a lot of time on the internet looking it up and seeing, trying to get it as original, close to original as possible. Uh, I think we came out with a pretty good product. I think so too. And and that form in particular, there is so much variation on the 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 online on YouTube. <laughs> uh, that that form is done very differently, whether it's you know through competition or <laughs> so. I'm sure that was difficult. <laughs> One of the things that I noticed that they do in competition is when they come down and they poke they smack their belt to make it jump, which has no practical application, but they do it in competition. And then I watched a few where they had team forms. And these, uh, one of my favorite was, was an Italian team. And, and these guys could just elevate and do that 360 to turn and a half. Right. <laughs> with, with relatively ease. So it's, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful and fun for him to practice. And it's the same to watch. Yeah, absolutely. What, what degree uh, did he assign that to the, that? Is that a fifth, fifth, sixth degree form? Well, originally it was not going to be a testing form. And I still don't think we're using it for testing, but the uh, fifth degree is where he recommends that okay. you learn it. But we've, we've taught it at the master's clinic, uh, Master Goodwin. Yes. And I, uh, let it, she did most of the work. <laughs> and uh, so we taught that and presented it and it was pretty much open to whoever wanted to come in and, and practice it. Yes, sir. I had the opportunity to, uh, to take that lesson. It was a great class. And it's oh. like you said, it's a fun form. That was really the main reason I knew that you had a, a hand in, uh, you know, archiving it for the association because <laughs> I took class with you. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> you see a lot of, there's a lot of faces at Masters Clinic, so <laughs> they, they, all, they all kind of blend together. <laughs> yeah, and there's a, a lot of new ones and like, I'm not sure I could, you know, ever get all their names straight. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, yeah, especially when you you come from the the early days where there were only a handful of people at the early training at Masters Clinic. Yes. So uh, we jumped ahead there a little bit, but 
you talked about your, your Korea trip in 1972. Um, did you continue to train with that, the, the master, what was his name? Scalar 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 yes, he was a, a major influence. He was extremely talented. And as we progressed, he went more toward uh, competition kickboxing. So we had a kickboxing team, which is a member of, and we traveled to Australia and, and uh, fought the Australians. And then the Filipinos came over here and we had competitions around Northern California. So I, so I kickboxed, but then as it got more and more to uh, just competition, I want to remain traditional. And so eventually I wound up with the World Tong Sudo Association. Around that, when did you first meet Master Debaca? Oh, shoot. Early 70s. Okay. And so it, as far as uh, like talking about training partners, uh, is one of the best, is innovative, always in great shape. And then uh, Master Duffield, I met in high school. I moved from Oklahoma to Santa Rosa for my senior year. And then he went to service in... 65, right out of high school. Yeah. And I went to junior college until uh, for a year and a half. And then I went to service. So when I'd come home and leave and I'd see Master Duffield, we'd get together and we'd work out, uh, party together, just start hanging out. And we've been best friends ever since. And other ones that uh, have been great to work with, uh, Eddie Ramirez would come up. He's living in Watsonville at the time. And he, he's in, Master Ramirez is in Vinden, Nevada now. And he still comes over so often and we get together and review forms. Uh, Master Logan. Oh, shoot. Master Lowe, he was with us for years. He's living down in Texas now and he goes over with uh, Master West ever so often. And let's see, who else? And then in Oregon, Master Hour. Uh, I moved up there and I had to had, uh, martial arts school and then he took over when I came back down to California Hutch and then there used to be a group of us that would get together every Sunday afternoon up in Roseburg and uh, and it was our special time for working out and so it was just it went up close friends that just had the same common mind training we go down and we'd work on whatever we wanted to and that was another one of the really a, a good thing so for Master Baca when he had his gym he, he saved two nights a week for classes for advanced people so we'd get together I think it was Tuesday and Thursday and work out for an hour and a half or whatever and, and visit you know so it was not a, a formal workout as per se but we'd work out work on sparring work on bag work conditioning and those are the kind of memories that uh, make it all worthwhile. Absolutely, sir. I, uh, you know, I, being an instructor, it's it's those trainings that you I live for now. Being able to get together with the the, the people that I've come up through, and like you said, not necessarily a, a formal training, but those are the, the the really the opportunities you get to hone your skills and learn new stuff and and sharpen your technique because. <laughs> You're, you're training with with people that have done it, you know, for as long as you, if not longer, and they're not going to let you get away with, uh, you know, doing things halfway or half-hearted, so. <laughs> About what time did you, were you connected with, uh, like, Master DeCole, Master Fresnel, and, and Master, you know, Master Claire and Pat Marsh? When did you finally uh, meet those, that crew? I met them uh, real soon. What? What transpired was uh, Matt Ramirez was down down here and he started sending me information about the World Tong Sudo Association and sent the newsletter and looked at it and they went to China and I looked at it and wow, usually that's reserved only for the high ranking Koreans. And they, I think Master Nicole was in that group that went. And then we had a, a test, a workout in Yuba City Master Klingon's school. So 
we all came down there, about eight hour drive from Roseburg and, and I met Grandmaster Shin. And he's, he's an amazing person. And so I went back and I filled out and joined association. And at that time, uh, and then he recommended that I go down I, and meet Master DeCole because he was a good businessman, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I went down and we, the San Diego on the relative office and then he would take me down to Mexico and we'd go to different schools and teach and have meetings. And, and uh, a couple of times, Grandma Shin came out and we all went together down in New Mexico and wonderful people. Yeah, I, I think it was Master Marsh and Master Purnell talked about the, the long bus rides and being able to have some opportunity to spend some extra time with Grandmaster Shin on those, those Mexico trips. Yes, that, <laughs> that was one thing back, back then, uh, so I was original director for like nine years and it was California was still region one. So we had California, Alaska, Hawaii, didn't have a school in Hawaii yet, and Washington, Oregon. So if we did anything, it was always a fair amount, large amount of traveling involved. A couple of times uh, we had went to Spokane, we had a, a regional championship up there. And so Master Baca did a bunch of promotions and we chartered a bus. And that's a little better than riding in a car that long, but that was that was a long drive. Yeah, I know uh, Master Ramirez down in Mexico still charters a bus to, to bring his students up from Mexico to the world championships, every, uh, every world championships. That's a long ride. I'm, I'm sure it's better than a car ride, but that's still a long ride. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, a couple more people saying hello. Master Marco from Sweden says, Tung Su, Master Stein. Morning. <laughs> and uh, Brandon Max says, looking good, sir. Looks like an Oregon, uh, so one of the Oregon folks chiming in. Um, it's oh, Brandon, Brandon, it's my brother in law's son. Oh, okay, there you go, <laughs> ex brother in law, but always remain good friends. That's right. Master Wolverton says good morning as well. Good morning, ma'am. Speaking of regional directors, <laughs> yes, <laughs> so uh, we. I, I think when they did the the Hawaiian Championships, were you able to go to that recently? You know, well, it's not recent now, but what was that, 2019? Yes, that was a a, a re what do you call it? Rebirth, re, we opened it back up. Right. Uh, we had two, and uh, uh, Mister Lion was over there and had a school going. We had Pacific Rim Championship. I can't remember the years now. They all run together, <laughs> and. Uh, so this one was was uh, was fun. Uh, Master Warburton worked with uh, Mr. Palmer to get it get it going, and I think we had 16, 16 masters. We had more almost more than than uh, competitors. So we're we're doing it again this year, and hope and right now, uh, if you've been vaccinated, you don't have quarantine when you go to Hawaii. For a while, you had to spend two weeks. Okay. <laughs> How was your vacation? In a hotel room? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, wait, you don't get those two weeks for free uh, to quarantine? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, the, the guy that I, I teach with, Master Kaluzny, and his wife uh, were, went there as well. Some of my friends, like the Ma Brooks, Muhammad and Stephanie, and it looked like uh, it was a great time. It was. It was it's real enjoyable and now it's pretty relaxing uh based on where we are we're on the kihei side and it's a pretty relaxing uh area awesome yeah i look forward to going i have the only island i've ever been on i went to Kauai a couple of times uh which is really nice too so uh speaking of traveling we talked about mexico we talked about hawaii obviously what are some of the other places you've had the opportunity? Any any memories stick out? You talked about traveling to Australia for kickboxing. Um, any World Tung Sudo memories that stick out to you as far as traveling? 
uh, went to Argentina at that time with it, with the, was listed as a leadership clinic. So I went down and I presented there and, and worked out and met all the uh, Argentinians. And that was, that was a nice memory. It goes by fast when you go on those trips. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You, you, you spend so much time traveling and you get there and you before you know it, you feel like you're back on the airplane. <laughs> yes. When you when you travel to events like that, what do you uh, is there a, a topic that you typically teach? Uh, I left it up to Master Nicole. To, he's making the itinerary. And so that time I taught the, the Don Gum and I think some one steps. And then, then I shared with the other people who were presenting their techniques and, and I got to work out. Oh, Master Valentin was down with us yeah. at the time. That was, he's, he's a lot of fun too. He's, he's, he's a quiet reserved guy though. Uh, <laughs> he is? <laughs> you, you gotta work real hard to get him out of a shell. <laughs> um, do you have, you know, as far as martial arts skills, are, are, are there any, obviously you said you kickbox a lot, any particular areas of, of Mar World Song Sudo or, or just martial arts in general that you in, enjoy? I uh, did judo. Okay. For, and actually won the Tackle Grand Championship in 1970. I date myself again. And, and that was fun because it, like you say, it lends itself real well to in, in close fighting. Mm -hmm. I just uh, noticed that the grappling doesn't work as well if you're uh, outnumbered by a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it's just important. That's, 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 that's what's so nice is uh, Grandmaster Shen saw the, the wisdom in opening up our master's clinic to new ideas and different instructors, different uh, styles. And, and then also in our comment, it encouraged you to study an, an additional art. And then like I know, uh, Master Godwin is uh, the master of Hapkido, so. Yeah, absolutely. When you talk about judo, you're, you're speaking about, you know, throwing people, wrestling, grabbing people and holding on to them. I, I, I definitely gravitate. I love to kick <laughs> and spar that way, but I, I also enjoy being able to do the grappling part of it as well. I, I think it's a great complement to what we do in our stand-up training. Have, have you ever had the opportunity to, to uh, present, you know, judo or, or kind of grappling training uh, in any clinics? Uh, I've quite a few times at the master's clinic I presented and not judo per se, but uh, ground ground techniques, grappling, mm -hmm. uh, throws, and then integrating a synergistic approach to our one steps, adding a throw. And then also uh, many of the, like I said, many of the young, the forms have techniques that because of my background, I see a setup for a, a sweep, a throw or a takedown. And, and I really enjoyed that because when you really get going, you never wind up in the same position twice. So you have to be innovative and let whatever you can do come out. I, it's, uh, I, I like that you, you mentioned that. One of the things that I've been doing a lot with just, with just the white belts, not necessarily demonstrate or showing, having them do it, but on a lot of our turns, especially in just the Seike Youngs, you know, and, and introducing the fact that it, it's not just, I'm not just turning to the other side. I could be grabbing someone or, you know, taking them and throwing them. And uh, it, it really kind of opens up that box is like, oh, well, if it's, if that can be a move, then, you know, what about these other things? So I, I love that, especially on that, like you do your kicks and that back turn I teach is a, just a hip, a hip toss and you know it's it's so simple and it's 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 there but you know we don't always we don't always see it <laughs> no i one of my biggest revelations when i was training in thailand it's, it's kind of embarrassing now is like 
Anasupakaramaki. I thought, I never block like that. I'm, I'm going to block like this. <laughs> I thought real linear. And then one day was firing and all of a sudden the technique came and the block came out. Wow, I guess it does work. I get the muscle memory and it, it just came and there was the technique. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I love when, you know, people will, will share stuff uh, that they see in MMA and then show the direct application from a form. Uh, recently, I saw like from Pyongyang Samdan, when you, you do the spear and then spin and do the back fist. And I, I saw they pretty much the exact same move in a, you know, an MMA cage. And it's like, it's there. You just gotta, you just gotta find it. <laughs> Master Wolverton said he's done many clinics in region one. We appreciate his skills. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, and then uh, Miss Miss Russell, good morning, Master Watson, Master Stein. I, I know uh, Miss Russell has uh, done a lot in helping connect the masters in in this you know the weird time that we've lived in over the past year, being able to uh, to do the instructors classes and help with the the Zoom for the masters clinic. I know it's not the same, but it, it's definitely helpful to be able to connect with people. <laughs> it, it's it's been a, a saving a saving grace. Uh, I know when at first we we're going to try to do a a test on Zoom, I was kind of kind of skeptical, like it just doesn't seem right. But then we did it, and it, and actually the first one we did turned out real well. It's 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 a different doing a remote. Uh, one steps remote self-defense where you, you go through the motion without having a, a partner, which I think we've all done in our training when you're, you're at home, you always are doing something that has to do with martial arts, walking through the house, sidestepping around a door. Yeah. But anyway, it's, it's, it's actually been real useful and I think we'll probably still continue using uh, this format, even once we get back to normal, because uh, the year before last, when we had our uh, regional championship, we had quite a few people from Connecticut. They didn't come out here, but they were on Zoom. They got to compete on the forum. So something like that, uh, Master Wilburn said she's going to try to keep that that going, which uh, is good a good thing. Absolutely. And it, it gives access to instructors that don't necessarily have a, a master or a, a, a mentor close. It gives them access to, you know, high level instruction from, you know, another, a light, a world's away. <laughs> when I yeah. talked to Master Tobacco, it's funny. Um, I'm sure you know he's he's not a very technical te technologically advanced man, uh, <laughs> and he was he was talking about he was like yeah I'm gonna go over to Master Stein's house and we're gonna sit on a panel for testing and he's got a big he's got a big TV and we can watch it from there. <laughs> so you're you're his uh, you're his technological hookup. <laughs> I'm not really very good at it. I think uh, at the the Masters Clinic, I think they awarded me the Masters Master because I. I got into Master Con when I was trying to get to a, a breakout room. So I, I stopped his feed for, I don't know how I did it, but, but I, they told me I did. <laughs> so I, I do re remember exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it was, it was your, uh, your training crew was, was the, you took center stage of the, of the feed for a few minutes. <laughs> and I still don't understand how, how I could do that because because I've had my uh, struggles with, with Zoom. I finally got a laptop, so it's all contained in one. I, I try to run it from my computer into the front room where I had room to work out, and get on the TV, and then the speakers wouldn't sync. And so uh, I think I've still not got it, but I've, I didn't make any mistakes this morning when I clicked in. Yeah, it was, we had a, we, it was nice and easy. It's, it, it's probably you know, to think back starting in the 60s in the martial arts to now where you're 
connecting with people all over the world. <laughs> it probably just seems like another lifetime ago. Yes, uh, uh, we progressed in a good way. Uh, it's, it's like everything, got to keep some of the old tradition and be able to adapt and assimilate new information and new ways as, as I think majority of our students are women and children now. Mm -hmm. Because where in the old days, it, uh, it wasn't. What do you think, is, is there anything that you that was done back then that kind of isn't done anymore that you, you think would benefit uh, people in their in their training uh, if, if, if it was brought back or, or maybe something that that you do that maybe other people don't do still? Well, that's that's an interesting question. Uh, you know, talk, talking to people, one of the things that, you know, I, I, when I started, it was an hour long class, but, you know, talking to people where there, it was, a, you know, 90 minutes to two hour classes, I, I feel like that would, you know, it'd be hard to do, but I, I think that would be a, uh, you know, something that would, would benefit people uh, to be able to disconnect and, and be able to train for, for that long now, uh, I think would be a good, good thing for some. I, I, I agree. You reminded me of when I was in Roseburg, I had hour and a half classes and it was great for a certain percentage of people, but most everybody else, an hour was playing, uh, because of the lifestyle, their schedule or, or their physical condition would limit them like after they're an hour they're, they're they're ready for a break but sony i used to like say have an hour and a half class and then i cut it down to an hour and it it, and it works well if you if you spend your time training if you, if you spend your time you know talking john and visiting then you need an hour and a half <laughs> that's a good point and yeah, if you if you keep the, the talking down to a minimum, uh, which I'm personally a big fan of, you can definitely get a lot accomplished in an hour. But I, I think there there are some benefits to, you know, possibly having some some hour long trainings. I think it's similar to like master's clinic where they make you train for days and then you you take a test and you're basically running on fumes and, and spirit at that point. <laughs> I remember our first uh, code on jaw test. We still met in the uh, indoors in the arena, not arena, but it was like a head of stage and open floor and then stadium type seating. And so we'd been there all week, weekend doing the training and then training is over 10 o'clock on uh, Saturday night. Grandma Shin goes, okay. You know, so and so, you're on the floor. And one of the masters goes, but I'm not ready. I'm, I'm not sure. And he's, Grandma Shin goes, masters are always ready. 200 jumping jacks to warm up. <laughs> We've been working out for days, like 200. That's, <laughs> and that, that was a, that was a fun test. Uh, I know in uh, one of the things you sent me, you asked about training with some of the, the masters, uh, what a privilege to do with uh, the, the group I tested with, um, Master Goodwin, Master Khan, Master, oh, Master Chambliss, and, oh, and Master Sharp. I think there were seven of us. And to just to feel the energy that, that came out, like we, are, we meet and talk, we're all relaxed and no one's uptight. And you just don't realize how much internal power there is in, in some of these guys. It's, it, it was a real treat. And I really enjoyed working out with those guys. Yeah. So I remember when I tested, uh, Master Robinson was, I think he was the only person going for seventh on. And just to feel his energy and uh, just spirit on the floor was, was incredible. But uh, I think at the World Championships 2014, yeah, it was you, Master Gawain, 
uh, Master Chamberless, Master Khan, Master Sharp, Master Vaughn. Uh, I think it was it Master Brit. Was Master Brit in there too? I think he was. Yeah. Uh, I think Master Vaughn actually tested earlier, but we were promoted at the same time. Right. But remember he was on the board. Oh, okay. But yeah, I mean, when, when you talk about the history of World Tung Sudo and, and Tung Sudo in, in the United States, um, that's a pretty impressive list of, of people <laughs> to, to be on the floor with. So I can imagine the, the energy uh, that, was, that was felt in that, that moment. <laughs> yeah, that, that first test I was talking about, I got paired up with Master Chamberlain for uh, the one steps and the Man, that was great. I mean, it was just, it's just so much energy. It, it raises your level. And because, uh, you know, Betty me is always so laid back and talking soft and and then got out there and got on the floor. It was a different thing. He was, he was intense. It was just, just uh, amazing. Another one of my favorite tests was uh, with uh, Grandmaster Strong at that time. And, and we got paired up for self-defense and set us on the floor. And we rolled around and it was intense and it was fun. And I, so that was, I really enjoyed the physical test. I, I think I started a, I hadn't completed my thesis. So Reverend Shen said, until you complete your thesis, you have to take the physical test. But I liked it. So, <laughs> and I eventually finished my paper. Yeah, what, what is it that you, I'm the same way. And I, I talked to some people and uh, they're like, Oh, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't like taking tests and you know, there's, there's a bit of nerves, but I don't know. There's nothing like getting out on the floor and, and uh, I guess performing is, is kind of part of it. Right. You just, you're just, you're, you're just performing and doing what you love. That's what I tell people. It's like, do you love Tung Sudo? Yes. That's all you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> when they go to a black belt test, it's like you're taking a longer tongue sudo class, and they're just they're, they're testing your cardio. <laughs> oh, you test your cardio, it's Master Marsh. We had a uh, yeah, he took him out for a run before they began, <laughs> and about half of them were spent by the time he got back. Uh, Master Pernell's a an animal too, in a good sense. Yeah, no, I I you know I I love hearing the stories of. You know, Master Marsh talking about making people do and knuckle push-ups going down the the bleachers in the you know in a gymnasium and <laughs> like you said it, he 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 did some hard training back in the day and uh, I, I would have loved to have been a part of some of those. Um, I've heard that the the Region 18 guys are are also famous for their push-up warm-ups at at Masters Clinic as well. <laughs> oh yeah. But, uh... The guys from Puerto Rico, they they presented at uh, a couple clinics in a row, and it was a circuit training with running, push-ups, sit-ups, bag, and just continuous. I did that, and I thought I was in good shape. But, uh, that, that was a quite a challenge. I'm after Burgos and a couple other guys. Yeah, but the, I mean, you know, that for me, that's what you that's what you go there for. You go there to be challenged and you know, pushed out of your comfort zone. <laughs> yes. It's like, uh, take your cup, turn it up, and we'll start the your white belt. Absolutely. Yes, sir. I, you know, you talked about earlier about not knowing, uh, you never, not being able to know everyone that's at master's clinic. I, I kind of like that anonymity, right? Like you're just there, you're just another person training and, and working hard. I, I, you know, there's something to be said for that. Yeah, that's true. How many, how many master clinics have you been, have you been to? Let's see. I think I missed two. Two? Wow. One I made up when I went to Argentina. One I missed was I showed up and were ready for a, uh, Wednesday night, so we went over to get some dinner, and I got a call. My uncle in Arizona was was uh, aging, and he had fallen. So I saw a few people on Wednesday night, and then then I was gone. I had to go to Arizona to 
to help take care of him. So I missed that one. I'm not sure it counts as a miss. I was there. Yeah, I don't know. I, that, <laughs> you paid for the airline and, and for the to be there, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How about world championships? Do you have any any uh, memories of of uh, going to the world championships throughout the years? Uh, one, of, one of my favorite. I would be uh, in the master demonstration, and I had breakouts. So master and R and I, R and I did uh, one steps. Uh, I've done some other things, and then I did a Chinese sword form on one of them. But uh, so being able to be involved. At the, that higher level is, is really exciting to be able to contribute. And then even if you're not in a breakout, we're still as a group doing a group Kyung or something of that nature. And so everyone's involved in, and uh, the association's done a really good job keeping that all together. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm trying to think, I don't, I, I was in one group basically getting beat up by my wife in one of the breakout sessions. Um, but I don't think I've been in one of the official uh, master's clinic dem or master's demonstrations. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to maybe doing one next year uh, at world Championship. Good. <laughs> um, I'm excited to hear the, the, the information that Grandmaster Strong is, is going to be promoted to to ninth degree uh, at the the national nationals this year, um, that's that should be fun and probably the the first big event back for the association uh, after being gone for so long. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Are you gonna you're coming coming to it? Yes. Excellent. That, Gotta be there when Grandmaster Shin, the Grandmaster Strong becomes ninth Don. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much a can't miss event if you can if you can swing it. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited for that event. Um, it, the, he's a very deserving candidate for for ninth degree. Obviously, for all the things that he's done throughout the year, but years, but especially the leadership he's shown, you know, through the last year and a half through COVID. Yes, he's he's, he's an amazing man. Proud to call him a friend as well as a training partner and Grandmaster. Right. How about uh, Grandmaster Bodwin? When was the first time you got a chance to meet him? Oh, well, the first our, our TAC committees when we first started out, it wasn't a master clinic, it was like a technical advisory uh, group. So I met him there, and, a, and I, one of my favorite things that he always did when he had a master clinic was he would do a talk and relate your, your inner living to some of the characters. You, you take the Chinese characters and break them down, tell us what it really meant. And he was a really nice, special man too. Yeah, I, I got a chance to spend some time with him uh, in Aruba for a Region 18 championship. And yeah, it was a, he was a great guy and I've, had Master Fairley share some great stories about him uh, here on the on the show. So I'm thrilled that they're they're continuing his legacy over there in Connecticut with the, the Bodwin Academy. Yes, he, he was such a special man. I uh, due to our positions that never really worked out with him per se it was always either he was instructing or and once you get that position you spend all your time with the flock so to speak uh your time is not yours anymore <laughs> right <laughs> as far as it's crazy to think that you know next year is is 40 years of world tongue Sudo association what do you what do you think are some of the the reasons that we've had the the longevity that that we do um you know just seeing things throughout the years egos and uh you know arguments don't always keep associations together so what do you think the secret is to our longevity the main the people the main body of the people that are uh 
involved in day-to-day -day operations, it's, it's, it's the people. And it's the same like in my, my work. One of the reasons I stayed with the company I did so much was I enjoyed the people I worked with. I enjoy the people I work out with. Uh, like you can go back east, people you haven't seen in a year or two years. And it's like, they never missed a day. You've seen them every day that you get that kind of close relationship. Uh, we have, and the other thing is we have a system in place that people can follow. So that you know what you're doing. It's not like, well, how come I didn't get to take a test? Well, we didn't meet all these prerequisites. And the, uh, the people that have real hard egos and stuff like that usually leave on their own accord. I don't know we ever had to actually kick someone out maybe, but usually people get to that point, they, uh, they eliminate themselves, the ones that have uh, incorrect attitude. I won't say the wrong, in, an attitude not in, in line with our, our, D, our D ideals. Uh, yeah, you're right. Um, it's one of those things where it's, it, it's, it's not for everyone, <laughs> but if you are willing to be a part and follow, follow the guidelines that have been put, put forth, then I think it's, in my opinion, one of the best organizations around. You can't beat the people in it. It's, it's exactly like you said. It's because that's, that's what makes the group. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, Jose Rivera from uh, Region 18 says, hello, sir. Jose, Jose is a good friend. Uh, I, I got a chance to, to work, work with him at Master's Clinic uh, through the candidate class. So uh, it's just amazing, again, seeing all these people throughout the, the world. Um, you got to love technology and, like you said, the association. That's 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 why really why I do this. You were asking earlier um, why I do this, and it's it's for the camaraderie and the the brotherhood and sisterhood that it it provides. Yeah, I had a few students that uh, they look forward to our regional championships because they'd made friends, you know, that you don't keep in contact with on a day to day basis, and just look forward to getting together and sharing and visiting with them again. So the people. Yes, sir. Yeah, I did the same, you know, going through com competition and then eventually going through the years and then those people then be the, are the people that you see at master's clinic and uh, you judge with at world tournaments. It, you know, it just can, they, the, the, they, they just, they just happen to stay, stick, or, stick, or, uh, stick around. <laughs> Um, Master Wolverton said, Master Stein has been a driving force in Region 1 and World Tung Sudo, someone who inspires us to do more and do better. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so I, I, I like that. And I, I think that you talked about Master Debaca and yourself, and, and she says you're, you're an inspiration to do better. And I, I feel like guys like you and Master Debaca um push yourselves to continue to uh grow and make sure that your techniques are sharp and uh that they don't go away you know so you can still hang with the people half your age what do you think what what do you attribute that to that you know motivation to continue to to keep training hard and pushing yourself 50 years into your martial arts training. And when you say it, that sounds old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, it's something you love to do. Uh, and, and still, uh, I remember uh, Marvelous Marvel Hager, the boxer, uh, talking one time and, and I was asking pretty much the same question about your technique and how do you stay motivated? And he goes, there's always a new punch. Well, in boxing, you think, well, there's you know, three, four, with a new punch, a new angle, a new setup. So it stayed fresh with him and you know, working on new, new little things. And, and uh, that's happened for me from uh, me doing something. And it's like, 
wow, I just discovered something. And it's maybe something so small that some of us would go, well, of course. <laughs> but no, but I just discovered it. <laughs> and I think it's one of the, the, the main things in teaching is uh, sometimes we tend to overteach. And oh, I've done that, like get someone who's doing well. And then I start pointing out this little thing, this little thing, and pretty soon they're, they're frustrated. So I learned to, to back off and, and, you know, not over teach. And then also the, the self-discovery. Like uh, I had a student one time when I was, it was been a long time and, and he came and he's so excited. And he goes, look, look, look what I figured out. And this is spinning back kick. And he goes, you got to do this to set up. I said, I've been telling you that for weeks. And he goes, I know, but I just figured it out. <laughs> and, he, and when people get excited that you help like that, uh, that helps motivate you too. Cause it's, it's so much fun and enjoyable to watch somebody gain something and, and grow. Absolutely. And I, I recently had a conversation with someone uh, a, a teen and they said they were bored and in my head again I've I do this I've done this forever it's like how can you be bored but you know when you when you go through it and you, you're just memorizing the moves and they're just you know a means to an end then I yeah I can understand how you can possibly get bored but to me like you said there's just so much where I could be doing something that I've done for 10 years and be like, wow, I just learned something new. That's awesome. <laughs> but you gotta, you, you gotta be open-minded to it, to, to see it. <laughs> I had a, one of my friends working out and so I was doing bag work. He said he wanted to learn how to punch like I did. So I went over in the bag and I, showed, and the guy was pretty good. And uh, so I said, do this. And on the left, he came back in about 20 minutes ago. What's next? Well, Another year on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, you know, they talk the the talk about the history of like the Nahanchis. So basically, the Nahanchi forms were uh, a style that people studied for years. <laughs> you know, you think of one one form, and that was that was their style. <laughs> and there's so much in there that you can extrapolate. <laughs> when I was a Junior, I went to a wrestling camp in Minnesota, and one of our instructors was a two-time national champion. And I overheard him talking to us, the rest of the staff, and he goes, "Man, if if I knew then what I know now, I'd have I'd have been something like one two-time national champion." And I didn't, you know, I couldn't equate that back then. I just, and I understand what he means now. Like he's, with you, there's so much to learn by the time you absorb it. Uh, you might be a little bit past the comp competing age. Yeah, but yeah, it's the old, uh, I've taught you everything you know, not everything I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, I, I read uh, some history one time saying that a lot of times like in the Chinese when they would pass a form down, they would leave a section out or a couple moves and that way they could tell if the person was teaching somebody else or, or, or whatever. So they... Interesting. That's so the way they kind of... Kind of control those. Like, you never know, like, you might turn on me, might leave or whatever. Uh, and, and then I've had uh, people got their black belt and they were excited and they wanted to start their own style. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see, you have your own school, but your own style, like, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And some people have done it, I guess, and were successful. Sure. Yeah, I guess you got to start. You know, association starts somewhere. Well, sir, we're we're at the hour mark. Believe it or not, um, I want to thank you for joining me. Is there anything else you you want to share before we before we wrap up? Or oh shoot. Uh, You don't have to, our closing word. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to thank you for, for being persistent and getting me on here. I really enjoyed uh, 
talking with you and hi to all the audience out there. Looking forward to seeing you guys coming up in the, the next year. Hopefully uh, we, we go back to a more normal living. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, thank you everyone for watching and, and sir, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Um, and I look forward to, to saying hi to you in person at the national championships. I agree. All right. <laughs> Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Thank you.